Let's do some gear pulls again. Whoa! Whoa! I don't even know if splitting lanes is legal in Texas. So the windscreen. You know what else I think is important? Hey, what's up, Tenere? I know you want this bike. Are you really going to ride this bike off-road? If you're like me, and the answer is no or not much at all, then this video is for you. Let's do it. All right, guys, here's my very, very first ride on the all-new 2022 Aprilia Touareg 660. I'm going to bring you along for the ride from Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. I'm very, very fortunate. Huge thanks to the folks at Aprilia Piaggio USA. So I'm going to do my best to give you guys a few acceleration pulls through the gears. This, this particular bike does not have a quick shifter on it that is optional you'll notice that the dash it's bigger than the other 660s uh, it's a bit more advanced and the but the interface is actually a little different than the big bikes later today I'm going to shoot a tutorial on that dash and uh, make that a separate video I'll link it here as you can probably tell, it's, uh, it's a bit cloudy here in Austin. It's a bit humid and it was kind of wet and drizzling earlier today. So the roads are not perfect, but maybe perfect for this bike. All right. So that was 100% uh, throttle in urban mode through the gears, except first gear. I don't think I was full throttle in first gear. And uh, I did not take it to the top of sixth, but uh, it got to, I wasn't looking at my speed, but it got to where it got to pretty quickly. Very smooth power delivery. It feels like the torque has been brought down a little compared to the other 660s. So that's going to make it very user friendly in urban and I imagine off-road conditions. So let's talk about ergonomics. Can you guys see that? I'm roughly maybe 6'2", uh, depending what shoes I'm wearing. This bike feels very comfortable for me. It feels roomy. The handlebars are pretty tall compared to, well, of course, much taller than the Tuono, at least in terms of, uh, in relation to the seat. The seat and tank feel pretty narrow, but not too narrow, right? You want some girth in there to hold on with your legs when needed. Let's see how it is standing up. I feel very comfortable in the standing position. Fully extended legs, straight up and down, almost straight up and down, uh, full body. Arms extended enough to really stretch during those long rides. And enough room to go over some bumpy, rough terrain while standing up, using your body, your entire body to, uh, maneuver through obstacles I'm not an expert I'm not even an intermediate off-road hell I'm a beginner off-road rider but I do have experience on touring bikes on the road and uh, I found myself standing up a lot just to stretch and relax let's check that mid-range acceleration if redline is around 10,000 I'm gonna be in fourth gear between four and five K and I'm gonna roll it on right now. Feels pretty good. Solid, smooth I should say. Very responsive, predictable, nothing 
you know, no flat spots. That power delivery curve feels very linear. Why don't we try that if we can in a lower gear? Oh, nice, nice. Very nice. Even punchier in third gear coming out of that 4,500 RPM range. Let's see if I can test that in second. Let's go. Whoa! Whoa! Woo yeah! That's it. I love it. This engine is a little different for sure than the other 660s. That felt good. I love it. So that's probably going to be, if I had to guess, the most common gears in like RPM range, right? Kind of that middle, middle of the of the of the RPM range, middle gears, punching out of situations when needed. Very uh, predictable power delivery, throttle response. Currently in urban mode, I think the engine map setting in urban is two out of three. I think. Let's test the, that ABS. Nice, nice, nice. Very nice, stable. I was really putting pressure down on that rear brake to stabilize the bike and it worked really well. Let's do some gear pulls again, sec from second gear to really feel that. With the little open throttle, I think last time it was totally closed. All right. Just to 100 miles an hour, want to keep it safe. Solid guys, solid. Also, the windscreen, it looks a bit short, but I think the, the steep angle of it is really pushing that air over my helmet, or at least towards the top of my helmet. I don't feel that wind pushing on my helmet at all. At least not at this speed. So, the gearbox is great. The power delivery is very smooth. The torque is, the torque and power, very available, low to mid range. You saw the acceleration. I'm trying to look for a flaw. The seat is pretty soft, not too soft. The handlebars for me, I mean, I'm just really comfortable. Arms are, you know, I could fully extend them if needed to stretch or lean forward to get a little more aggressive. So for those that are under six feet, you'll be a little more stretched out, but look how much room there is on this seat to sit, to move up, to move back. A lot of room on this seat. The controls I'm very familiar with. Oh yeah, someone on YouTube asked, or maybe it was on Instagram. How does the bike feel on the freeway over bumpy uh, roads? Well, I can't tell if this road is really all that bumpy because this ride feels very smooth right now. Very little vibration in the mirrors. So for those of you guys that uh, are gonna use this bike to commute on, Maybe some freeway, highway riding. You're gonna love it. It's very stable, very smooth. You saw the speeds I was getting to. It wasn't until I was, I don't know, I'll look at the video, but at the really top end of that speed where the bike started to feel a little unstable. So maybe that's the only not positive mark is at those higher speeds, the bike was getting a little loose, but the front end was little shaky but that's to be expected with what I think is a 21 inch front wheel like all of these bikes in this category are going to experience that I'm, I'm guessing because of um, that's not what they're designed to do if you want to spend your time averaging above 100 miles an hour get 
a uh, Tuono 1100 base model, that's what I would say. You know, or a Multistrada, something like that. But if you're really gonna urban out, I'm really loving it for that right now. So if I'm gonna punch through traffic, Oh yeah! Woohoohoo! That acceleration between 4 and 7K is so good. And it doesn't come on by surprise at all. Very predictable. I don't even know if splitting lanes is legal in Texas, but sorry about that if it's not. Brakes feel great. I'm talking about around town. Emergency stopping, like I kind of tested in that parking lot. No, coming up to that intersection. Um, ergonomics are great for me. It's got a pretty big gas tank for what it is, I think. It's almost 5 gallons, 4.8, something like that. Right now, the, the fuel, the average fuel gauge is estimating 50.3 miles per gallon. It's pretty obvious that Aprilia really focused on tuning this engine for this application. The bags on it and slightly more street tires. I could ride this every day. Unless I was going from LA to Santa Barbara, then I would want the Caponard or something bigger. The Multistrada V4 was awesome for that. You can see that in one of my videos. The gearbox feels good. The throw between each gear is consistent and easy, even with my running shoes on. Don't do that. So after about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes of riding now, and also like the bike idling, I took a walk around video before I jumped on it. Uh, now I'm starting to feel a little warmth, a little heat coming from the engine down low by the foot peg. Nothing extreme by any means, but now I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, that second, third gear area is really nice. Oh look, a USB charger. That's cool. I could really use a phone mount right now. Around town, I tend to use the rear brake a lot more than the front, unless I'm trying to stop in a big hurry. U-turns are a breeze. The weight, the, uh, this bike does not feel heavy, but feels very stable. You know what else I think is important is the turning radius of a motorcycle like this. So why don't we kind of play with that right here in this parking lot. From a stop, if I turn it all the way, how easy is it to just... There it is. Wow. Holy moly. I've never ridden a bike like this. Look at that. Holy. I did not put my foot down except towards the end. Pretty awesome. I could see how th that'll come in handy if you are out in some unpredictable terrain situations, but you cannot do this on a Tuono 660. Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's go back to Coda. I better check my map. It's an individual. Why don't we play with that for a second? So, individual traction control. Let's go to one. Engine braking two, engine management one. Yeah, that's good. TC2. Uh, yeah. All right. Quick review of engine map one, which is the, oh yeah, the snappiest, quickest throttle response setting. Guys, you're going to love this bike. I'm just telling you right now. Granted, I'm not. Hey, what's up, Tenere? I know you want this bike. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a Honda Africa Twin. 
I can't really compare this to other bikes. I haven't ridden like I know the big one that everyone compares this to is the Yamaha Tenere, I guess 700. Um, but I don't know all the uh, all the chatter I'm hearing and some of the reviews I've checked out comparisons this bike is is uh, beating out that Yamaha why because of the engine the and the tech the electronics the technology that they've put into this bike I think that's like a big deal on a bike like this um, so the intake on this bike sounds so cool just like the other 660s so it gives you you know this parallel twin it definitely gives you that aprilia italian exotic visceral feeling while riding which uh you know that's a big part of i think why a lot of people get into the exotics I also shot a very detailed cruise control video. I'll link it here when it's ready. So in conclusion, guys, the Touareg 660 is the best of the Aprilia 660 family. The engine has a much more linear power delivery. The dashboard is way more intuitive. The entire package is obviously designed with a purpose. I love it. If I could put some bags on this thing and slightly more street tires, I would commute on it daily. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one soon.